Real estate investing can bring big reward and big risks. So know your risks. Welcome to the Real Estate Risk Report, the show for real world insight on real estate investment risk. Now, here's your host, Lance Peterson. Thank you for joining the Real Estate Risk Report. I'm your host, Lance Peterson. So today I have with me JP Albano with Significant. They are a Veravest verified gold sponsor of ours. So super excited to have them on board today. How you doing, JP? I'm wonderful, Lance. Great to be here. Yep. Happy to have you. So um, as we as we normally start when we have guests on, we'd like to sort of, you know, jump into kind of how you got, you know, into real estate. And I'm always curious, uh, you know, kind of the, the origin story and what leads people to, you know, form their own real estate investment companies and and I think for, for many of our listeners who are, you know, passive investors, I think it's, it's good because many of them, you know, are kind of at the beginning of their journey. And I think it helps sort of let them see that, you know, most people have to start someplace. And, and a lot of times people start, you know, on the passive side, especially these days with the proliferation of just access to real That's estate right. syndications and things like that. And so, you know, who knows, right. maybe one day, you know, you, you yourself might become a GP, who knows, uh, a general partner in one of these deals like JP and, and his team. But uh, so JP, why don't you share with us, you know, how did you get into the real estate biz? Well, thank you again. I'm so excited to be on this platform here. So um, I think I, like most of the listeners on this show, started out listening and, and trying to make, learn how to kind of get involved in, in creating passive income. Uh, up until that time, getting into the real estate world, uh, I was working as a, uh, an account executive for a technology reseller selling all the stuff that runs the cloud. And I've uh, been doing that for a number of years very successfully. I'm very, very grateful and gracious to, to be in a position to have that sort of job. But I got to a point where I was I was trying to answer, ask myself, what else can I do to generate passive income that wasn't selling hard drives for the rest of my life? Mm -hmm. And so it led me down a path of exploration, kind of learning, well, what sort of industry can I can I tap into to do that? Um, and real estate really just kind of resonated with me. And then, as I'm sure many of the listeners know, there's a lot of different ways to get involved in real estate, right? Whether you're doing note investing, uh, fix and flip, uh, wholesaling, there's just a, a bunch of stuff. And I remember um, early on, I, I absorbed a lot of books, a lot of content, a lot of podcasts. And I remember getting uh, getting really turned on to the guys from uh, Bigger Pockets. Oh, yeah. they, they create a great platform there. And, um, but they're really focused on, on the single family and they have a, a strategy that it's with a Burr strategy. I think maybe many listeners know about that. And for those that don't, the Burr strategy is an acronym. It stands for, uh, you buy a house, you, uh, rehab it, you, uh, refinance it, you rent it out and you take the, the money, the equity that you created from that and you, you repeat it into the next deal. And I remember seeing this blueprint for like success and it was like, you burr like 10 times and then ultimately you, you, you get to, or you elevate to a point where you buy this big brick apartment building. And I literally remember thinking to myself, why don't I just go buy the apartment? Like, like, like learn that now, if that's ultimately the end goal. And that's the course, uh, the direction I went into. And, um, you know, at the time, this is a number of years ago, it was hard finding a, a, a resource, an educational platform to learn about how to underwrite deals, how to learn the jargon. And they're there, but you've got to just really dig up your sleeves and, and kind of look into that. So that was my, my start. And I, I, real estate, multifamily specifically just made sense for me. Uh, and I, I, not, no disrespect for the, the, the single family um, element of, of real estate. It just, it wasn't my thing. And, and multifamily just made a lot of sense. So, um, so I got into, I got, I got into an educational platform with a great group of uh, the guys over at, at Jake and Gino wheelbarrow profits. Um, they did a wonderful job, wonderful curated community of really, um, like-minded, just really good people, uh, and found a lot of support in that, in that group. Um, and I, and through that program, I went to one of their boot camps and I met my partner, Matt, uh, up until this, th that point in time, I think I had about, uh, my first unit, my first property was a 28 unit property uh, in Houston, Texas. I was living in New Jersey at the time. And so we syndicated that deal, man, I don't recommend syndicating your first real estate deal, but it's a great way to learn, um, all of the things that it takes, you know, to syndicate or, or, or put the pieces together for, uh, for a real estate deal. Um, so that's, that's good. The, the very quick kind of quick start into that. I'm, I'm happy to go into how we, we form significant because I, I, I love telling the story. Is that, is that cool, Lance? Can I get into that? He's wonderful. Yeah, he is. Super I got a Christmas card from him one year. I was so excited. I'm like, I made it in life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, he's, he's a good dude and, you know, passionate about educating people, you know, he in the is. multifamily he space. Is. So, 
Yeah, I mean, I am always curious, you know, how did you guys then decide to kind of go from, okay, we syndicate a deal, you know, and then right. actually decide to sort of put together an actual, you know, company and and, uh, and go after this? What yeah, so my, I, I, yeah, I met my partner, Matt, my real, my, my business partner, Matt Shields. Uh, we, we just got along really well. We both are passionate about uh, wellness and fitness um, and uh, biohacking sort of thing. So we just got along really well. We went after a, a big deal together. We didn't win it, but we, we learned through that process of what it would be like to be a partner. And so we agreed, let's partner up our resources and let's go after these, I don't know, hundred unit property sort of things. And um, we did, we started, you know, underwriting lots of deals and making offers, not getting anywhere. Uh, and then kind of fast forward to September of 2019. Um, I went to a, uh, a networking event and, um, at uh, uh in sundance utah it was a three-day event i remember getting there you know late in the evening and there was about 300 people there and they had these tables all set out and people were sitting down having their dinners and everyone was in mid-conversation i kind of felt like i was in middle school all over again with my lunch tray i didn't know where to sit so i remember vividly looking in the back of the room there was an older gentleman you know white hair white beard sitting by himself and i thought to myself let me go sit next to the old guy maybe i'll go learn something that was the approach i was taking when i going to this place like who can i meet how can i better my you know better myself what value can i add to them that sort of thing so i walk over i introduce myself i say hi i'm jp he says hi i'm howard you know nice to meet you he asked me what i do for a living now i'm rebuilding my brand at this time sort of thing so i'm going i, I buy large multifamily apartments he goes how interesting i've had five thousand units over my 20-year career Career. And I think to myself, oh my God, it's incredible. So I sit down with him and I start to become friends with him. And I learn, you know, clearly he has a ton of life experience. He's in his seventies at this point in time. I learned he just lost his wife to Alzheimer and dementia. And this is someone that really, really cared, loved his wife. And so it was like, he lost a piece of himself when she passed away. And this is his, 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 uh, his ability to, to kind of rebuild, rebuild himself a little bit. So I sensed that sadness and I felt like he just needed friends. So I, I was there and listened to him and asked him questions about his life. And, you know, he had origins. I, I learned a lot about him and this will tie into our, our it's tying into our origin story. I I learned that Howard's skill in life is about how to craft and use language. I'll give you an example. He told me a story where he uh, he was in the same circle of Howard as Howard Schultz of Starbucks fame. And his advice to Howard Schultz was, your business is not about selling a cup of coffee. It's about the culture of coffee. And that's why today when you go to Starbucks, you order a venti latte mochiato or whatever, right? You don't just order a black coffee. And so that's Howard's thing. And so I, I learned um, I learned through our conversations and spending three days with him, you know, his business, his unique prospect on, on multifamily housing. And I'll, I'll get into that. So in, in Howard's world and in our world, uh, because we, we formed a partnership, um, he didn't call people renters. He didn't call them tenants. They didn't live in units. They don't live in apartments. Uh, they don't have leasing agents. We don't pay rent. None of those things. We changed it. And he changed it to you. you we invite people to become members of our community. Right. They live in a home, not a unit. Um, it's almost like being part of a country club, if you will. But this isn't just re restricted to, you know, luxury housing. This is blue. Everybody, everybody, no matter what color shirt you wear, you can kind of live in these places. So he would invite people to live in, in, their, in, the, in these communities, uh, uh, and become members. They would sign not a lease, but a membership agreement. They would pay a membership fee and they would work with a membership coordinator. And, and part of the reason for doing this. The rationale is that you want to break down this, this typical contentious landlord tenant dynamic, where if it's not you, Mr. Renter, it's somebody else. And that's so prolific in the industry today. So, um, so we kind of did away with that. Uh, and, 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 and the other thing too is, you know, we would let people, he would let people choose what color paint they want on the wall. You know, when you do a turn for a unit or a home, you're going to paint the walls anyway. Well, geez, why not let the guy or girl moving in there choose the color on the wall? They're going to want, there's one staring at it the whole time, right? So, and, and the crazy part about this is it, it doesn't cost any more to do this, but the, 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 the giving them the freedom of choice is so profoundly impactful because what he found, what we find is people will take pride in ownership now as a result of this choice. Again, even if they pick the same default color of beige, it doesn't matter. They now have choice. And so what they tend to treat the unit or the home as if it's their home. And there was less wear and tear cost on it. And then this kind of boiled into, you know, other aspects of, of just feeling like they were a sense of belonging and being treated with dignity and respect. I'll give you another example. I do a lot of apartment shopping. And it, and for those of you that are, are interested in doing kind of passive investing, I encourage you, go secret shop one day and go see who the big, the big players out there. And I can tell you, I can count on one hand how many times I've been asked my first name out of the gate. Usually the interaction works like this. I walk into the leasing office, I'm standing there awkwardly waiting for someone to acknowledge my presence. Eventually they do. And then when they look up at me, it's sort of like, can I help you? Like I've annoyed them somehow. And then the first question out of their mouth is how many bedrooms do you need? 
And when can you move in? No one asks me what my name is. Do I have a family? What brings me in the area? What my interests are? None of these rapport building questions. And it's, it's amazing how, how prolific that is in, in, in the, uh, in, in the industry today. So needless to say, we don't, we don't do that in our community. So I'll kind of wrap up the, 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 the story here a little bit. So at the end of the three days, I, I say to myself, I go, Howard, how the heck is it that I find the one guy out of 300 people on the first day that's in multifamily? I said, clearly God and the universe has put us together. Right? How do we keep the party going? And so we uh, we worked on an arrangement. We hired Howard to help us build a spiritual successor to what he did 20 years ago. And so Howard acts as a strategic advisor for us uh, at Significant Lifestyle Communities, and he's very very much part of the team. We know I'm talking to him at least once a day on, on various things. It's so wonderful having a, a great friend and a mentor that has that experience uh, to uh, to tap into uh, as we as we build our our, our, our empire here. Um, so that's that Lance is is is, is a story, and he's a wonderful man. I'm so thankful. I mean, but I work with him sometimes I, I'm literally like pinching myself going what did I do how did this happen right that's a good thing so it, it's been great no, that is, that's, yeah that's a great story <laughs> no and I, it's, it's so funny that you bring that up too my, my wife and I you know we have just recently moved from Portland which is a great city it's yeah. beautiful yep. Um, yep. or at least was like two years ago uh, they're working on mm -hmm. cleaning it up but to Houston sure. Texas and specifically Kingwood which is a suburb uh, just northeast of uh, downtown Houston and yep. we were we were having this conversation about, you know, it's like having been spent 20 years in Portland, we we're yeah. kind of like, you know, what's weird. It's like it's like there's not there's not this really this sense of belonging or community is just like absent in Portland. Um, and sure. maybe some people will, will disagree with me, but just having lived there for a long time and we started thinking about like, why does that happen? Right. Like, why did that mm -hmm. happen there? And it's interesting mm -hmm. because. You know, in Portland, you can really get, you can get anywhere in the city from anywhere. Like it's a big That's city, right. but it's a small, big city. And so, right. you know, the thing we always noticed was that like people will go to school over here and they'll go to church over there. And like, and it, it's, they, they can just freely move about wherever they want to go. But the problem yep. that it creates, like you're talking about with your, your properties is that it, it, it doesn't foster a sense of community because you can just go wherever you want to go whenever you want to go there and, you know, and distance creates, you know, it creates a problem. It's hard to sort of sustain community. And, you know, we talk to people that live like in down, you know, L.A. or Orange County or something like that. I mean, you really, you know, you can't because the freeways are so congested, whatever. It's like you've got to just, you know, if you live in Santa you got to stay local. you got to just hang out in Santa Ana, right? And, <laughs> yep. and, and now living here, and the reason we were talking about this was that we realized that in Kingwood, it's like, it, you know, it's just all – you know, there's only two ways really into the place. And it's just like, you, you don't want to just go and drive all the way over to some other part of Houston because it's just, it's too much of a nightmare, right? And traffic. And, it, it's true. You know, but it's just, the, but the thing is, right, is that to, to your point is that human beings, they, they, they crave and need belonging. They have to be a part of something, right? And, and, yes. um, and we're trying to do the same thing at Veravest. That's why we call it the Veravest Sponsor Network. And we're fostering a community. We have a community manager because, yep. because yeah, it's virtual. People all over the place. But we need to do everything we can to try to get people to interact with one another. I mean, the internet yeah, great, but we have to have that sort of interaction. And then even today, reading on the Wall Street Journal, the, the mental health crisis amongst 13, 18-year-olds right now. And, yep. and just now that it's they're bad. starting to go it's back really to school, bad. people are acting out and it's just, it's, yep. it's just a complete mess, which of course my wife yep. and I have five kids and, and we're seeing it firsthand. I mean, the toll it's taking on young people is just, it's just sad. Um, it, it absolutely because is. When you it take absolutely is. that away and they can't be a part of something, it's just, it's, it's, it's built into our DNA as human beings. Mm -hmm. So exactly. I love hearing what you guys are doing is really taking it to the extreme because you know, once again, it's more than likely, you know, we can get into this in a second, but like you said, whether it's class A or it's workforce housing or whatever it is, it, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter that if it's a human thing, buildings are inherently like close to one another. There's many units. Yep. There's some, there's some, yep. you know, some density to it. And yep. you might as well foster a community where they feel like they're special and a part of something bigger than themselves. We go, that's the key. We go out of our way to introduce prospective new members into the community with other people there. And what, what Howard found in his 20 years of tenure is that people would rather give up their left arm than leave a place where they have their friends. Yeah. 
that was that that and you know there was waiting lists there and people were willing to pay a premium to live there but we were giving people we were creating that community and that is that's what we are we want we crave that because we're social beings yeah that, that's right and like you said it's funny because see this is the real estate <laughs> risk report it, it's a risk mitigation strategy like like totally. like you said is that you're repainting the walls anyway let them pick the color like things like that you know like people will make decisions to live one place over another over something like that like it's just yeah. it, it's but yet like you said, people, they miss it over and over and over again. It's right in front of their faces, but yet, you know, there'll be a bunch of people who listen to this and be like, well, I'm a GP and I own putt and, you know, like, hey, great idea. They won't execute it. They won't implement it. They just sure. won't do it. So, so with that said, then maybe, maybe get into kind of, you know, where you guys, you know, are investing, you know, how, how yeah. do you take what it is that you're doing then? And then, you know, put some shoe leather on it. Like how, what is the execution of this strategy look like? Does, does, does this sort of mindset yep. Does it change the types of properties you look at or maybe share? It does. Yeah, it does. It does. Great question. So we go after B and C class assets. We look for uh, assets that are in, I would say, B and above neighborhoods. The challenge is for a group of our size right now is access to capital and being able to be in a condition where we could take down B plus A plus property uh, locations, right? So, you know, we, we'd we much rather be in amazing, amazing locations, but there's, there are significant premiums for, for being in that. So the best we can do right now is going after B and C. Uh, there's a ton of value to be created with our uh, operations operational improvements that we can do. We look for properties that have... Um, uh, rent deltas that are significant. I mean, that's not a pun on our name, but like uh, $250 or more. We love Big Juicy. Uh, one of our, our largest deal that we've, we've closed up in, in uh, uh, outside of, of Cleveland, Ohio, that had our average rent delta is about four to $500 per unit. So huge, huge swing. Now we have a deal under contract in South Carolina right now. Same story, you know, four or $500, a thousand dollars actually, if you look at the three bedrooms. So we like the really big meaty upsides. Um, we look for uh, average household income uh, to be in the low 30, 30, $35,000 or so range or more. Um, the higher, the better, because there's a, a larger pool of, of potential renters or members, prospective members for our communities there. And um, we don't want you know, we're not going to do short-term leases again, because we want to fo foster community. So that's not going to happen when you have a lot of transient people going in and out. Um, we like places that have uh, a good amount of, of, uh, of either uh, single, um, single parents or families. Uh, the parent, the single parents are great because we can provide some resources for their children to have their friends, you know, be able to help the, the struggling single mom or single dad. Uh, you've got five, five kids. You yeah. said four. Five, if, yeah. yeah. I remember when we had our first one, I'm like, how does a single parent do this? We are pulling our hair yeah. out the first, the first week. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, and so, the, you know, that's, that's, those are some of the things that we, and then we, we focus investing on in the South. We love growing uh, markets where there's job growth, population growth, all of the, all the major checklists that you want yeah. in investing in an area that you want the tide rising all boats. So, you know, when I'm curious, I got a couple, couple questions on this line. So you, sure. how, how do the members, yeah. Yes. How does that hit them when they realize that, you know, that, wow, you're using like all different names for everything, right? Like, like, do they, like, in, in, in the second part of the question is really, how do you execute then? Does it require you guys to have to do your own property management? Or are you able to use third party property managers to get them to execute that? It, it's funny, how, again, how the world works prior to meeting Howard my company and I, we were in the process of, of moving from third party PM into our own PM business. We knew we'd have to, we, we did it at like 250 units. It was like really small, like create, like, huh? It's just, the, the, the economy doesn't work there. But we, we, the principals were paying out of pocket for that because we found our various third party PMs, frankly, stink. They, they, and this isn't disparaging to all PMs. The ones we had, they weren't really doing a great job. They weren't executing our business plan. No one cares about your baby as much as, yeah. as, as, you do right so they didn't have the same drive that we did the same execution all that stuff so we started moving in that direction then after we met howard howard made it very clear that you know part of the problem is what part of the reason why we don't retain a lot of staff from existing properties that we take on is people fall back into the old habits you know what i'm talking about here about units and renters that's very very ingrained industry stuff and it's hard 
well, impossible. It's hard to untrain people. They'll easily fall back into old habits. And the remarkable thing is when we do train our staff, we do a three-day on-site intensive with our, our staff. Howard's there. We're doing, there's a lot of transformational work that gets done, um, is how impactful it is for the, the people that work in the business. Like they're, they're like, I never knew this existed. I never knew this was even an option to, to treat people like this way. Cause it's really a blend of hospitality, right? Like kind of a Nordstrom's approach or Ritz Carlton approach in, into housing. And so you kind of open their mind to realize, wow, I, I can do this. And we were really inspired by the work of a great book called uh, Firms of Endearment. If you haven't read it, wonderful book, amazing study about how uh, businesses that focus on customers and their employees and or their employees like Wegmans, Patagonia, BMW, Honda, uh, those sort of organizations, how they out perform their competitors in the S&P by a thousand times over the course of, of 10 years. So just a really inspirational book and re help helping Matt and I realize, you know, we can run our business however we want. We'd rather invest in our customers. We'd rather invest in our employees and make them so spoiled. They don't want to go anywhere else, but enrich their lives. And that's how we impact and change the world. So kind of going into a little rabbit hole there, but you asked a question about uh, uh, people and teams. So yes, we do our own, our own property management because it truly no one else yeah. is capable of delivering our style of management and our ethic. And that's the key to our success. Yeah, no, and that, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, it just would seem Im impossible to, to, to go in and try to say, stop <laughs> doing it that way, do it this way. And, you know, it's yeah. sort of lukewarm. And so with that said, then when you do, you know, you go in and you're doing it on your own, I am curious yeah. the, the reaction from these, you know, prospective <laughs> members, like what's yeah. going on? Because I mean, obviously you talked about Starbucks, right? And you know, clearly yeah. that was, I mean, I remember back to when no, you know, none of us really knew what the hell Starbucks was. And then you went into Starbucks and it's like, uh, this is weird. Like, it, it yes, just, it yes, was freaking yes, weird. yes, yes, yes. Uh, but they've done well for themselves. Well, they've done, they've done that, well, right? but yeah, you guys are sort of at the, you know, most, <laughs> I'm assuming most of these renters. Exactly. These prospective members and, have never. And they were telling them, calling them all these weird like, things, what right? What is going on here? Are you guys like a cult? S so I almost, so what, um, what happens is our, our, our Cleveland deal, our Shaker Heights deal is probably one of the, one of the, one of the biggest, uh, examples of this because we've had members that live there for many years, five, seven, 10 years. And, and unfortunately for them, the previous management, they, I don't want to use, I don't want to disparage them to them. They, they ran it a certain way, uh, not a great way but just a certain way. And they got used to that. And so when new ownership came in, you know, it's like, all right, great. Here's the new owner, yep. right? Probably the third or fourth one. Here we go. What's this going to happen? And we came out and we, not that we made a lot of promises, but we, we, we said we were going to do things differently. We're going to make the improvements that you asked for all those things. And of course, part of this change was literally kind of Monday morning, they show up to, you know, pay their rent. And we're saying, you know, yes, we'll take your, your membership fee now. And they're like, kind of, what are you talking about? So there is, there is a, a, there, there's a couple of transformations that happen. There's people sort of even self-referring to themselves as renters and I'm paying my rent. And then eventually they sort of pick up on it. They pick up on the fact that we're, we're calling them something different. We're trying to elevate them to something, something else, um, which, which eventually takes time. And then ultimately the truth is not everyone's compatible with, with this ethic yeah. uh, for better or for worse. They just either, they, they, they view themselves. Maybe it's a, it's a, um, self-worth thing, right? That kind of comes into play and they're just not a good fit and they'll move on somewhere else. But the people that really love being treated with dignity and respect, it resonates really well with them. And while they might not use the same language on themselves, they, they fundamentally, spiritually, they understand that they're being treated differently. And what, what blows my mind sometimes is seeing the impact of this style of management on in the real world. And if I, if I can go into this for a quick second, Lance, because I think it's, it's, it's so cool to talk about. I keep track of all of our rent increases or membership fee increases. And I use it because it's, it's a great metric or barometer to gauge how well this is resonating with the community. Because the point of doing this is you want to enhance the perceived value of what we're selling. What we're selling is a lifestyle. We're selling someone the opportunity to live in a home where there's an opportunity to have these sort of renovations be treated in a certain way. That's the whole package. And well, what does that mean from a dollars and cents standpoint? So I have some metrics. So basically we took over this property in December of last year. Um, the, 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 our competitors were selling the same product. It was like ceramic floor with old kind of uh, the, 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 the uh, laminated countertops, the normal, yeah, yeah, the, classic, the, yeah. the, the normal, yeah. yes, the, exactly. The, the classic level. Let's start here with our value add program. Right. Yeah. And you know, so again, we were under market significantly. So 
the first couple of new renew, uh, uh, new signups that we got, um, I have the numbers here, were, were pretty substantial. We went from, we went from, in one instance about two weeks into the, the property, a 29% increase, uh, and then an, up to 32% increase. And then at our highest to date is a 52.2% increase. It's a $487 increase on, on rent for a unit that looked exactly the same as it did before we took over. And up until that point, I want to explain three things that we changed. We did zero curb appeal stuff, right? Because this is the winter time. We didn't paint any walls. The common areas weren't done yet. The only things that we did was we trained the staff on our style of management. We rearranged the desks in the, in the membership house and we hung up a sign on the wall that says, aspiring to Antastafe at Shaker Heights. That's it. But the way these people were treated changed the perception of value so much so that they were li li willing to pay almost $500 more for the same exact product as it was, you know, two months prior. And, and, you know, right now we're, we're currently about 18 and on average, 18 and a half percent increase, uh, on in place rents for, for, for the same exact product. Um, it's, it, it, it blows my mind and it just reaffirms the power in just doing the right thing with people and, and treating them like they're gold. It's crazy. Yeah, no, I mean, it's you know, it's it, it's not that surprising. I mean, when you when you think about it, I mean, it's just. So, what what are some of maybe the other things that you guys, you know, like you said, you sort of change that culture, and then yep. you know, maybe maybe get into more detail on just some of the other things you do to to, to create engagement. Because I'm assuming that's part of it is like introducing, hey, this is how you know, this is the culture. But then you've got the getting the buy-in and, and, and start those, you know, getting the connections and getting people to yep. where they're going, wow, they, these guys, they, these guys mean it. What does that look like? Great question. So a couple things we do. First, we have all of our staff go out and secret shop or not secret shop, whatever. Just go out and, and, and see who our competition is in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And invariably, the feedback that they, they give us is it's the same thing. No, no one's doing the basic things like, hello, it's so great to meet you. What's your name? Shake my hand. Tell me about your family. It's the same. How many bedrooms? It's just like rinse and repeat. Rinse. So when someone comes into our doors, they're immediately greeted. Hello, just like I did to you. Hello, come in. We'll make an appointment. Would you kind of offer you something? All of that rapport building stuff. Tell me about yourself. Tell me about your family. Where are you from? What are your interests? And they use this information to kind of tie it back into what their life would look like living inside of our communities. So we're, we're, we're immediately different out of the gate, just from an energy level, right? And then we go on a tour. They go on a tour. And they'll do the show tour and they'll walk them through our various models, kind of our basic level that looks exactly like it is today. And then a, a, an enhanced level one we call, I'm not going to get to it, a renovated you know, home and then, um, and then showing them what, what, the, what the potential looks like. And then we even allow people to have certain levels of customization. They can take elements that are between the basic and are renovated and 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 pick and choose some elements that they want that their home to look like. So we add, we give them a level of customization. And of course we have we have about six uh, different painting samples on the wall. Where again, one of the last choices they get to make before they decide to move in is what color they wanted the the, the walls painted. And that's that's a, a, a huge one for them because it's included in, in, in the price for, for the uh, the membership fees. Um, so I, it's really the pre-sales experience. That's a big part of it. And then, you know, we understand, we recognize one of the other really big, or very, very important aspects of, of, of multifamily is on maintenance, what the industry calls maintenance services. That's what we call it. We call it community services. So it's when your toilet isn't working or your, your, your sink is leaking, you know, what is that? How fast are you? How responsive are you? How easy to put it, to take it in? Does it get solved quickly? Is it going to repeat itself over and over again? So we instill in our team from training how important it is to number one, greet the, 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 the member, Mr. or Mrs. Last Name. Our, our guys and gals, they wear booties when they walk into their home. And when they're in there fixing the, whatever needs to be fixed, they ask them, hey, while I'm here, would you mind if I look at the caulk around the bathtub? I want to make sure it's, it's properly seated because as an owner, we know that that's going to be a collateral damage problem later on in the future. So let's go, let's get them to look at that while they're in there. And then also like while they're in there, let's, let's tighten up the valve bodies on, on the, uh, on the faucets as well, right? Because that, if that leaks, it's a problem for them. It's a problem for the person underneath all those sort of things. So, you know, we really try to make great efforts in enhancing and improving the level of the, you know, experience or service level with our community services team, because that's the thing that ultimately it's not the price in rent, right? It's, it's how much, how was, how did I feel living there? And was I treated well? And was I served? And that's the big thing. So we, we really focus on the pre-sales experience. And of course, more importantly, the post-sales experience, right? When they're living there. So that's what we, that's what our team does. Yeah. No, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's that, that onboarding, the first impression, the, 
you know, and you yes. think about it, I mean, it's like they walked in and they're treated that way. And, and like you said, you know, darn well, they're looking at four other properties nearby or whatever. I mean, that's just how you, try. I want them to, I want them to go experience that first, please. That's exactly right. And then they're going, <laughs> geez, like these other places, I don't know, man, you know, like, yeah, it's that, that's, that's great. I mean, and especially too, when you're, when you're transitioning an asset. Right. Yeah. It's that because I mean, as you know, if you guys are going, I mean, ostensibly, these are deeper value add deals. Like you said, they're in that sort of where you're playing. You've got some meat on the bone. You got some stuff to do. And, and, and I mean, as you go through those transitions, I mean, sometimes there's, you know, there's construction or whatever's going on. Right. Like you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're basically making deposits in their in their bank account, too, even to have grace for you guys. Right. That's Even right. When, That's right. Because we, some of those things just pop up and they're going, oh, this is great. That means, you know, things are going on. It means the community is getting better. Now, exactly. Why is this exactly. happening? And why are you, you and, know? And the truth is on that one property, you're right. I think it also depends on property by property, how, what the, the previous regime was like. But at this one place for years, like everything just was left neglected. And so everyone was so happy. We have six buildings and it's, there's almost like a little bit of a, you know, people are living in these islands and people in one building, they, we haven't gotten to them yet for a variety of reasons, but the other ones, their, their lobbies are being done. I just got pictures from my partner that we polished. This building had marble floors, right? Like white marble floors built in the sixties. It was like the creme de la creme back in the day. Yeah, yeah. So we repolished the marble floors. Um, we, we, we repolished the brass surround and the door on the elevator. Like it looks amazing right now. And your people absolutely that live there, they give you so much more grace because they're like, finally, someone's doing something about where I live. And, and it, it, it rubs off on them because then they start realizing they should treat it better or they enjoy, like it rubs off really, really well. It's but we have to be the, the agents of change to start that. Yeah, no, you do. And it's, and, and I think that's what's important, right? Is that I, mean, I think the hardest thing in life period you know, going through this is, is that is, is change management, right? Like, especially if you're, if yeah. you're a catalyst and you want to, you want to make a difference and you want to do things, you're going to have to become a master of change management and getting yeah. human beings to change behavior right, yes. is one of the yes. hardest things that there is period. End of story. Like there's just, it is, yeah. it is very, very difficult. Look no further than, you know, the whole, you know, as a world, this whole COVID thing, uh, yes. vaccinations and whatever. I mean, you just yes. see yes. that it's, it's really, really tough sledding. Right. And so That's I right. think it's just, these are the things that I'm, I'm, I love this stuff, JP, because some of my favorite books, uh, switch by chip, chip and Dan Heath, you know, all these things, the psychology of, of anything, right. And just really taking things to the extreme is really what's required. Because if you, if yes. you, if you sort of half-ass any of this stuff, you won't get, you won't get, the change you want, right? Like you, you can, right. you can give it lip service, but you really do have to take things like completely to the extreme, right. To really yes. get, to really get the benefit. And I think the reason I point that out is just to say, Hey, you know, if you're thinking about investing in deals, you know, obviously I'm a firm believer. You have to vet sponsors first and foremost, That's right. good people, That's right. you know, yep. yes or no. Can they execute the strategy? But then you're really looking for what are their differentiators? Like, what is it that they do different in the execution? Because ultimately, when you choose to make an investment in one of these deals, you know, yeah. you're basically advocating pretty much everything to, you know, the, the yep. sponsor, the investment manager, whoever it is. Totally. And you want to know that they've got at least something that's going to potentially generate, you know, above average risk adjusted returns. Right. That's and, right. And, and mitigating risk. And I think the theme we've had on this show is there's been other other you know, syndicators and things, you know, and it's funny, you start to pick up the theme from the top operators that it, it's, it's always this stuff that's sort of what some would deem sort of softer, but it's around the management, especially when it comes to multifamily, because mm -hmm. you've got human beings once again, or in really in like mobile home parks and stuff too, because like you're going in and you really do because in and, and, and the financial impact of getting someone to move in today and then not move out, for like three, four, five, six, seven, eight years is gigantic. Wonderful. Because like it's you wonderful. said, if they yeah, move yeah. in today and then a year from now they leave, you've got to pay for that turn. I got to pay for the you turn. You got to pay for the turn. You've got, you got downtime and vacancy and all this sort of stuff. And it's very expensive. And then the whole ownership thing too. I mean, like that that's huge. When people yeah. are treating the place like they own it, and you can get that to happen across a higher percentage of of the of the members, 
<laughs> the tenants, less wear and tear. Owners, less wear and tear. Less wear and tear, right? And they're probably fixing stuff and like, you know, they're probably doing their own thing, you know, that, that, that you're not even paying for. Whereas the other guys are like, this is broke, come fix it. Or just abusing things or being hard on stuff. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and also, you know, we, we, there's an evolution. There's a, from the people that live there, again, not everyone's going cut out for, for, for us and, and, and we for them. And so, but ultimately we start to attract the people that really find the value yeah. in what we're trying to do. And then suddenly the community is populated by those people that totally resonate with what we're trying to do there. And then that's when it becomes hundred percent occupied, you know, 75% renewal rate on, on, le on, on, on our membership agreements. Um, and that's where it really works out very well for our investors because we're, we're, you know, it takes a little bit of time, but we get to this point where we're really optimizing our, 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 our management piece here. And I want to just bring up one thing you mentioned about, you know, vetting sponsors. And not that I didn't vet the sponsor. I I'm also, I'm almost like the hair club president for men sort of thing. President for hair club for men, right? Not only am I a customer, I'm, a, I'm the owner. So I, I invested in, in, a, in a deal with a sponsor um, and I know what it's like to not get uh, timely updates. Um, you know, they're, they're, this is early on. It was like my first deal kind of participating in, but it's great because it gave me a lot of lessons on, on what not to do when I'm them. Right. So for my past investors, I know what it's like to kind of be abused a little bit. Um, and I don't want to do that for, for, for my people. So um, I, I think there's a lot to, 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 to that, that point that you made there, Lance. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and that's the other piece of it is just that it's <laughs> it's you know, it, right now, I mean, it should be table stakes that you get, you know, regular, good, solid communication. It should be table stakes. Whatever. Yes. Um, and obviously I'm passionate about that. But unfortunately, that's just not the case quite yet. Right. And so I think yeah, that yeah. that's a big part of what we're doing you know, my day job at Verivest is just that's really right. trying to, you know, up level stuff. Right. So that that's right. So the people like, you know, you guys that are doing those things, you know, it becomes sort of like, hey, the rest of you are going to have to figure out how to do this or, you know, you're on the outside looking in uh, because, right. you know, investors deserve, you know, once again, they've already advocated all the decision making to whoever, you know, they're giving the money to. You know, I think that's, that's right. a pretty big ask into itself. Uh, that's right. Asking to get sort of timely information and, you know, financial data and that kind of stuff really shouldn't be, you know, too much to ask. So that's right. Um, that's right. But yeah, I think it's, uh, no, I love, I love, I'm glad we were able to get the story, especially go back to the horse's story with Howard and, <laughs> you know, how that came about. And um, so where can people learn more about you? Like if they're interested in, in, uh, in, uh, learn more about you guys and how they can maybe participate in what you guys are doing. Yeah. Great question. So you can reach us uh, at our website. We are significant lc.com and I'll kind of give you the backstory. So significant is the word significant without the T I was telling Lance earlier on, we were, you know, when we were doing our core values for the company, uh, we, what kept coming up was making people feel significant. And so when my partner, Matt, was doing the logo for our business, all he kept seeing was sign if I can't, sign if I can't. So we dropped the T and it became significant lifestyle community. So if you go to www.significantlc, that's LarryCharlie.com, uh, you can go to our website and you can connect with us there. Uh, you can send us emails and you can see uh, some more about our story and what other uh, media that we've been on. So it's awesome. That's well, the best way. Well, this was a lot of fun, JP. Thank you so much totally. for your time. Loved having you on. All right, man. Thank you. I really appreciate it, Lance. Thank you. All right. Cheers.